Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're actually looking at the most massive star in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. This star is actually not very well known. As a matter of fact, it's almost completely unknown to the public because scientists have never really talked about it. Today you're going to discover what this star is called, what it's all about and how massive it is. Welcome to What The Math. Now, first of all, let's actually start with the distance to the star. It's pretty far away. It's about seven and a half thousand light years away from our planet. So in essence, it's kind of hard to see. As a matter of fact, you would need a telescope to even try to see it. On top of this, um, it's more difficult to see because it's surrounded by dust. Even though it's a very, very bright star, extremely powerful, extremely, extremely luminous, something like 660,000 times more luminous than our own sun, um, it's actually covered by dust and so it appears kind of dark reddish. And so for this reason, for the longest time, scientists didn't even notice this star. It is extremely massive though, it's about 152 times more massive than our own sun, making it one of the most massive stars we've ever discovered. Obviously not the most massive one, but it is there in the list with the uh, record holder, which is R136A1. But that star is actually not in the Milky Way, it's in a nearby galaxy of Large Magellanic Cloud. Now let's jump back to Earth for a second, and uh, I'm going to show you where you would um, be able to find this particular star. And by the way, the name of this star, well, it doesn't really have a proper name, it only has a, an, a, an astronomical name. Um, its designation is HD15558, also known as Hipparchos um, 11832. So to find this particular star, we actually have to look for a very, very be beautiful nebula that's uh, a few thousand light years away from our planet. And in Space Engine, you just have to basically find the Heart Nebula. Oh, it's right there. Now, um, it's kind of difficult to see it from this distance. As a matter of fact, um, I would have to use a pretty powerful telescope to actually try to see it. And I also have to kind of reposition myself just to make it look a little bit more like a heart because this is not really a heart shape. But there you go. In this particular nebula, which is the uh, heart nebula, as you can see, it's about seven and a half thousand light years away from us. Right in the middle of it, um, you would find this extremely massive star and actually a few other really massive stars as well. But without a telescope, it would be actually kind of difficult to see it. As a matter of fact, um, you would need to have uh, not just a telescope, but also relatively dark skies for you to be able to observe both the star and of course the nebula itself. So let's actually use Space Engine to jump a little bit closer to the nebula itself, just so you can see what it actually looks like. This very, very beautiful, this extremely um, red, but also extremely mysterious looking nebula. But I guess our main purpose here is not to observe the nebula, but to actually um, look at the actual star, but also more specifically compare it to what we know, our own sun and our own solar system. I'm actually going to jump into Universe Sandbox. And what we're going to do is we're actually um, are going to place that particular star right here in the middle of our own solar system, just to compare it to the sun. And then we'll see what happens if we actually let it stay here for a while. I'm assuming it's going to be quite a mess. We're going to probably create something that is going to destroy planet Earth pretty quickly, but that's kind of part of the fun. So uh, if we were to place the star right next to our sun, it would actually look something like this. As you can see, in terms of size, it's not that much bigger, but in terms of mass, it's um, extremely, extremely massive. As a matter of fact, this is almost 20 times the mass of the biggest star known to us, Ui Scuti. And that's a star uh, that's big in terms of size, not in terms of mass. It still doesn't really reach the mass of the most massive star, which is R136A1. Uh, that particular star is um, something like three times more massive than this. Uh, but in terms of masses of stars in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, this right here is the record holder. Basically, it does not get more massive than this, at least um, as of, I guess, August of 2018, we have not discovered anything more massive. And this means that um, when this star goes supernova, and it definitely will, it's going to create a tremendously large explosive, probably the largest we'll ever see. 
because I don't think there is going to be anything more massive than this particular object. Um, as, as you can see, if we were to compare this to our sun, it's kind of tiny. Our sun is really, really tiny in comparison. And the actual star here um, loses an equivalent of uh, our sun in mass every 10,000 years. Uh, so basically, after about 10,000 years, this much mass is going to kind of completely disappear into the outer space and create a part of that heart nebula. Now, with a temperature of about 50,000 degrees Kelvin and uh, with such a tremendous mass and tremendous luminosity, we definitely expect this star to not just go supernova, but most likely hypernova. And this is actually uh, a topic I've covered in one of the previous videos where we talked about an explosion that's even more powerful than supernova. So powerful that it will produce what's known as the gamma ray bursts, these tremendously powerful rays that, if by some unknown chance, are basically headed toward Earth, they will basically destroy all life here. It's very unlikely that these rays will actually reach Earth, but if they do, they will destroy everything. They're extremely powerful and very, very strong um, to the point where they'll strip Earth of most of the atmospheric uh, protection. Now, let's actually see what happens if I unpause the game now. And we'll, maybe we'll just actually start by eliminating our sun because I think our sun is going to uh, create a supernova right, right away. So let's just uh, leave the um, solar system as it is and basically see what happens to the rest of the planets. And then we'll actually add sun at the end. Uh, now, because this mass is so much higher than the, than the sun, pretty much everything will start falling into this star right away. And it just so happens that actually everything in the solar system is being evaporated quicker than it can reach the star. Mercury and Venus seems to have disappeared only in a few minutes, and even Saturn is heating up to the point where it's going to start evaporating like crazy. And that's because this star is so luminous, it's basically 660,000 times more luminous than our Sun, meaning that it basically um, releases that much more energy. And as you can see in this particular simulation, everything just starts evaporating. So here's Vesta, uh, an object in, in the asteroid belt, completely evaporated by the star. So nothing will even reach the star, um, it will just get completely burned by its emissions. Interestingly, all of these objects will basically just get burned completely. Um, but the one I'm kind of curious about is Jupiter. Let's just follow Jupiter's progress as it approaches the star, uh, I guess, every single minute. Uh, it seems that its temperature is already pretty much as high as the temperature of the sun itself. And so we'll see it evaporating pretty quickly as well. And it's uh, literally crashing toward the star right now. You can see its trajectory is almost entirely toward the star. So by, by the time it gets close enough, it will also start evaporating. Now, to be honest, this is definitely not something I expected. I actually thought that things will just kind of crash and disappear into the star. But it just so happens that I created something that even surprised me. Um, so as you can see, Jupiter now is at a temperature close to 9000 degrees Celsius. It is pretty close to the star and it's getting warmer and warmer here. It is now even hotter than the hottest planet out there and hotter than most stars in our galaxy. And I think by the time it gets to HD 1558, it will probably um, be just a small chunk of itself, although it hasn't really started evaporating yet. So maybe just maybe this is going to be one object that survives the encounter with this star. And maybe just maybe this will be the only planet left here. Look at that. It actually passed really, really close to the star. And I'm really surprised that it's not actually falling apart. It's still in one piece. Even the tidal effects from this object didn't really make it fall apart. Temperatures of 30,000 degrees Celsius. That's insane. This is how powerful and how tough our Jupiter is. Every other planet have basically been burned to a crisp. And so let's actually follow Saturn and see what happens to it as well as it approaches the HD uh, 1558, the star um, in the middle of our solar system, and as it basically gets closer and closer to its potential destruction. And it looks like all of the planets, um, specifically the gas and ice giants survived, but the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, uh, Mars, and Earth have been completely eliminated. 
but what's interesting though is that just based on the amount of energy that the star releases, even these four planets will eventually disappear completely because they'll just be burned to a crisp and all of their atmosphere, all of their um, gas deposits will most likely uh, be eliminated. There might actually be the core that's left, uh, specifically the metal core, and uh, this means that a lot of these planets will most likely become what are known as Ketonian planets, basically just the leftover rocky solid stuff, uh, but the ga gas stuff will probably get evaporated. And so that's kind of what would happen if this most massive star in our galaxy was placed in the middle of our own solar system. Now, this is a star that we're definitely going to hear about again because um, we do expect this star to create an extremely powerful explosion one day. It's most likely not going to be dangerous to us, but you never know. And at a distance of 7,000 light years, um, when this star explodes, the supernova, or specifically hypernova, is going to be so bright that you're going to be able to see it from everywhere. But it's not going to happen anytime soon, so don't really hold your breath because uh, it's going to take at least a few million years from now. Although, you never know, maybe it will collide with a nearby star and create that hypernova a lot sooner. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And before we finish this video, let's actually place the sun next to it, initiate the supernova, and uh, end this video on a big explosion. So here comes our sun, it's going to be falling into HD uh, 1558 very very slowly, but it will actually create quite a dramatic explosion when it does. Um, and that's it, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and here is that explosion, and I think we just created a super black hole in the middle, yeah there it is, there's that black hole, a black hole of HD uh, 15558. See you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.